Welcome, replay viewers. Yeah, I'm just gonna walk, right? <laughs> Why not? <laughs> Craig was like, can we, just, can we just watch it on TV and cheer? Hey, welcome. So I just tried to get on the T to take uh, take the train, the subway to the march that's happening in Boston, and uh, they're so packed you can't get on it. Hey, Colleen. <clears throat> Hi, James. So I just thought I'm gonna I'm gonna hoof it. <laughs> so I'm gonna have a long walk. Uh, because there are just literally thousands of people trying to get on at the Harvard Tea Shop. So this is Harvard Square, and I'm uh, going to cross the river, and we'll see how long it takes me, but probably not a whole lot less, not a whole lot longer than uh, waiting for the tea. <laughs> so they're expecting 90,000 people or more at our march here in Boston, and it looks like a good half of them are coming from Cambridge. <laughs> So I hope you guys are having a good day. I figured I'd take you for a little walk with me while I'm going. Uh, and you can see the city that I live in. And then I'll scope down at some point, but I'm coming up on the river, which is very pretty, even though it's not a very nice day. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I don't have a battery pack, unfortunately. I seriously need to buy some more gear for Periscope, but uh, I have good boots and it'll be a good walk and uh, it'll be a good day because it's going to be crazy down there. I'm very excited. And uh, I've been watching some of the marches in other places in Sydney and Paris and uh, Lithuania, which was interesting. <laughs> so, so it's a women's march, Colleen, and it's being organized in solidarity with the one that's happening in DC. And it's um, nonpartisan, but it's pretty, pretty much organized for folks who want to make sure that women's rights stay on the national agenda and that uh, politicians, including our new president, take them seriously. Save battery for March. Yeah, well, I'll just take you to the river. And then, yes, there was one in Sydney. I saw it on the Periscope. Hello, welcome. So I'll just flip the screen. Hi, how are you guys? I haven't scoped in a while, so it's nice to see you. Nice to be live. And um, good morning, Colleen. Hope you're well. Did you enjoy the inauguration yesterday? Did you watch it? South Boston, Southie, in the house. Excellent. Um, yeah, I'm very excited about the march. And um, I think it'll be nice to see all the uh, you know, see the women and the supporters come together. I know people are taking their kids. I know families are going. Um, it's going to be a big gathering, and I'm sure the one in D.C. is going to be huge. Mandy! Hi! So I was just saying, Mandy, before you got on, that um, I'm walking to the march because it's, it's packed. The subway is packed, and I couldn't get on. I was standing down there for 15 minutes in the subway waiting to get on, but I ran into some friends, which was nice. Women are awesome, aren't we? Blessed Cross, I don't know where you're from, but I've seen you, you know, obviously on these scopes, so thanks for joining me. That's nice of you to follow. You're not feeling well? Oh, well, that's okay. I think there are going to be plenty of people out, and there, <laughs> there's going to be plenty of work to do, so. You're not going to be able to get there, Mandy? Well, you know, everybody's doing what they can and what they feel comfortable with and what they want to do. I, I was actually supposed to be, I'm kind of bothered, I was supposed to be meeting up with the clergy because I do a lot of interfaith work and ecumenical work. And so my church is organizing a whole delegation, but um, I'm way behind schedule because of the delays. Good morning. Nice to see you guys. Hi, welcome, Privet. Um, no, I'm, I'm on um, JFK Boulevard. Sorry. I just turned around, but all you saw was me. So this is the Kennedy, Harvard Kennedy School right there and this is a, a park you know what I'll take you quick Woo! since I'm here I'll take you to the John Kennedy um, Memorial fountain which is not actually running in the winter but this is a John Fitzcarrity Park yeah that was a very Boston move 
Here, here's the inaugural address. This is nice, it's very appropriate for the season. Here's Kennedy's uh, inaugural address. Now the trumpet summons us again, not as a call to bear arms, though arms we need, not as a call to battle, though embattled we are, but a call to bear the burden of a long twilight struggle, year in and year out, rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, a struggle against the common enemies of man, tyranny, poverty, disease, and war itself. That's our own John Kennedy, who we love around here. Yes, the Kennedys, the Kennedys. You know, it was a big deal when he got elected, though. He was the first Catholic president of the United States, so people didn't like that necessarily or were worried about it. So every president, I'm sure, has their controversial uh, issues. So uh, it was a very big deal back then for a Catholic. People were worried that... Uh, he would have loyalty to the Pope rather than loyalty to this country. They don't write speeches like that anymore. Well, yeah, I mean, I would have to say that President Obama has done some pretty fine speeches. And, you know, I didn't agree with him on a lot of things, but I think Trump was trying to be conciliatory in his speech. I think that was his effort at being unifying. Um, I personally found some of it very troubling. But I recognize that other people found it very inspiring. And uh, we shall see how it all plays out. Anyhow, this is the uh, John Fitzgerald Kennedy Park, which is right next to the school named after him. And um, yes, Mandy, I agree. I think Obama is a, an incredible speaker. Thank you very much. It's so nice that you came. Um, and there are some wonderful quotes on the fountain for Kennedy. Um, so I'll read you one more quote since we're here and then I'm gonna take you to the river and then we're gonna run. Uh, so it says, when at some future date the high court of history sits in judgment on each one of us, our success or failure in whatever office we hold will be measured by the answers to four questions. Are we, were we truly people of color, courage? Were we truly people of integrity? Were we truly people of judgment? Were we truly people of dedication? So there's a thought for the day. On the start of a new administration, I think uh, integrity, good judgment, courage, and dedication are indeed the qualities we're looking for in a president. And we'll find out how well we do. And there you have it. So, um, yeah, I mean, I think today will be one of those days where people have very strong feelings, pro or con, about Trump, given the speech yesterday and uh, all the things that preceded it. Uh, and I'm trying to focus on the positive. Um, I, <laughs> some of you know, I went out drinking last night and um, that was my pity party. And now I have a headache. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I, I try to replace sexist language when I can. Um, yeah, I thought, the I thought the speech was very ominous, and I went out with some Latinas, uh, got their perspectives, and they also found it very disturbing. But I understand that, you know, uh, other people heard positives. And I think we can agree that the American president should put the American people first. It's just a question of how we do that and how we interact with the rest of the world and how we protect the rights of the people living in this country, whether they're citizens or not citizens. So those will be the issues we'll be talking about in the coming days. And today, we'll be talking about women's rights and making sure that they are protected and um, upheld and making sure that we link all the struggles together, that we talk about discrimination um, for everybody and not just some. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, sorry, I'm, all, I'm fired up today. I am fired up today, so. Uh, my apologies to those of you who don't agree with my views, but um, I'm trying to be respectful of different ideas, but true to my own beliefs. Okay, I'm going to run across the street. <laughs> Sorry, this is a very Boston thing to do. Was that terrible for you guys? <laughs> I, I don't want to get hit by a car, but I, I have to get across the river. So what I'm going to do is, that's uh, down there is the footbridge across the Charles River. And that's a, sort of a historic 
old Harvard Bridge. So I thought I'd take you guys across the bridge if you want to come along. And uh, then I'll scope down and try to get my way up to the Boston Common. This is a very cool, yeah. <laughs> oh, you guys are so sweet. Yeah, what street lights? Who cares? I do have a hike. It's not that far though. Boston's a pretty small place. It's just across the river. This is a boathouse. So you see the old Viking ship that they carved into this boathouse. This is one of Harvard's boathouses for crew. It's a beautiful old building, don't you think? It's so cool. Uh, so crewing is a big thing here, rowing. Uh, Harvard has a very good team. And it's, uh, there's a big race every year, the regatta, that they hold here in the fall. It's called the Head of the Charles. And I was gonna scope it this year, but it was pouring down downpour on the day of the race. So I didn't wanna get my phone wet, but it was a lot of fun. You can probably uh, see pictures of it. I, some other Boston scopers were there. I think you can see the skulls. If you don't know what a racing skull looks like, that's what they are. They're very sleek. Well, I don't know, James. I mean, I hear what you're saying, and I, I personally could never have voted for him. But I don't like to say that anybody who voted for somebody that I don't agree with did it for the worst reasons. I think people are fed up with government, and people are, um, you know, they, there were a lot of things said about Hillary, and people believed them, and I think they were lies. But if you believed them, you wouldn't want to vote for her. So, yeah, a lot of white women voted for Trump. Hey, thank you. Welcome from the Amsterdam. And um, yeah, I'm trying to be diplomatic. I mean, I got all my nasty stuff out last night. <laughs> so you're getting the better me. But you know, we have to live together. I agree on that. I think we have to listen to one another. I agree on that. Um, and there were some things in Trump's speech that I agreed with. I mean, I think the infrastructure does need improvement. I do think that kids, wherever they're born, should have equal opportunity. Um, it's just the way he's going to implement them. I have some serious, serious problems with. <laughs> so I'm sorry. It's kind of a, it's kind of a jumping up and down. Rational people must prevail. I agree. And I think we need to have a good effort to uh, hold people accountable. Not just listen. We have to hear what people are saying. Right. I think we have to understand where people are coming from. And quite frankly, I mean, I do a lot of dialogue work. I'm a mediator, I'm a volunteer mediator in the court systems. And a lot of times people just, you get so angry you can't listen. So I'm sure that there are a lot of people on the left that could do with more listening. But at the same point, uh, you know, at the same time, I think people are, are angry and we wanna talk about why we're angry and what we're concerned about so that our elected officials listen to us. And that's the point of today. <clears throat> yes, right. So well, this is the Charles River. And we're looking at Cambridge on the left and Boston or Alston Brighton on the right. And that's the, um, I think it's called the Longfellow Pedestrian Bridge. I'm not quite sure the name of the bridge. No, I agree. And I think both people on the left and people on the right say things that are irrational out of emotion. But usually the emotion is triggered by something underneath that's a profound concern to them. So sometimes what you have to do is look past at what they say to what their interests are no i agree james i totally agree and that's why i'm out marching today and i know people who are rape survivors who have been very traumatized by trump's rhetoric and his and the normalization of his behavior and i totally agree i don't you know i i would never have voted for trump and i don't think he should be president but my point, James, is just that I wouldn't categorize every woman who voted for Trump as somebody who should be ashamed of themselves, that's all. It has brought out a lot of the worst in us. Will I be running for office? You, you can bet I will not be running for office. Yes, really traumatized, genuinely traumatized because she was, because she sees in the kind of behavior that Trump um, has been shown to have acted out on. Um, she sees that as being, as, as, I don't know how to explain it as well as she could, but she sees that as part of the same pattern of behavior that allowed her to be raped, the, the rape culture that we live in, where it's acceptable for men to treat women that way and to do horrible things without repercussions. And so for her, Trump being elected 
caused her a lot of uh, stress and anxiety. So, a local office. I'm a great American. Are you sweet? Thank you very much. Um, so, do you guys want to go over the bridge with me, or shall I just um, pick, or shall I uh, scope down and then pick up later? Have you, Lady May? Positivity wins. I'm sorry to hear that, Lady May. But I think all too many of us have had pretty rough experiences, um, and some of them worse than others. And my friend is a very vocal rape support su survivor. She was gang raped. It's a terrible story, and she's an amazing woman with a lot of courage, and so I take her very seriously when she talks about that stuff. Bye, James. Thanks for joining. Uh, so, so that's, you know, I think we need to hear from people's experience, especially when it's different from our own, and uh, learn from it and be respectful of it. So, hi, John. Welcome to Periscope. That was, thank you guys for hanging with me. I'm just going to take you to the middle of the bridge, and then I'm going to scope down, and then I'll come back up when I get to the rally. Um, the AFC, yeah, I've done, I mean, I know people who serve on the, the AFC uh, or are very involved with the AFC. They're great. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm very connected to the Quaker Church through friends. Yeah, so at our march here in Boston, they were saying 90,000 people had already registered yesterday. So I would assume that most of those people will show up. <clears throat> Have you worked with them? Great. They do great work. I, I have a lot of respect for them. I'm a member of the United Church of Christ, so we do a lot of work with them on the international level too. So there we go, that's the city. No, I'm not familiar with a no labels organization. Hi, Mehran, how are you? Yes, I will be scoping from the rally. I'm, oh, does it look smooth? Oh, I'm glad to hear that. No, I'm just using my phone. Um, and I'm, I feel like I'm, making a mess of it, but uh, I'm glad to know. I think the stabilizer's on, so it's making it better. Oh, you are a legal service lawyer? Are you doing volunteer work? Because uh, there's probably going to be a lot of need for that. Uh, this is Harvard over there. That's one of the residences. Isn't that pretty? Beautiful building. And uh, that's Harvard over there. And I'll just show you the boathouse from this side. And then I'm going to scope down and run to the rally. So there's the Charles River with the geese and the beautiful boathouse. All right, I will. I definitely will. Thank you. I'll Google no labels. So thank you guys for joining. Um, it's very nice to see you. It's nice to be on scope. Um, I'll be at the rally probably in the next half hour, and um, it'll probably be underway by the time I get there, but uh, soon. The duck boats don't come down this far because of the bridges, but they will be. I'm sure there are duck boats in the water up closer to Boston. So yeah, come follow me if you want. And um, I'll hopefully be back on in a half an hour. And um, thank you guys. It's nice to see you. So ciao. I'll see you in a bit.